Scott will come out first at the airlock. We'll hand out the bags. Uh, once Scott's out, Chell will start handing out all the bags. This is to keep us from going back in to the airlock uh, midway through the EVA. So we'll head out. Uh, Chell will come out shortly. Scott's going to carry the MLI bag that we're going to put the MBSU MLI on, and Chell's going to take care of the Lee Lube uh, equipment that's going to go stage at the Lee Lube area. So Chell will grab the BLT or ball screw lubricating tool uh, from Scott and move it over to ESP2 where he's, where he's going to pick up an APFR. So Scott's going to head out. We're both heading to the starboard truss on the forward side out to almost the Sarge. So we're going to go up to Cedar Spur with Scott. He's going to translate out all the way to the end to Sarge area where he's going to go up on the Sarge handrail to the logistics carrier module where MBSU is stowed. As we get there, he's going to take the MLI bag that he has and stow it on the bag. While he's doing that, Chell's going to be working to get an APFR off the ESP2 and drop off the Lee Lube tools and bring the APFR out to AMS. When Scott's got that bag deployed, he's going to start removing the MLI or off the MBSU. He's going to start tying down what we call the skirt, which is a lower portion of the MLI. It has eight tabs on the front. We're going to tie four down to one handrail, four down to the other. And during the, near the electric connections, we're going to tie that side of the MLI skirt down. After we get it tied down, we're going to move to the aft side, where there are two bolts that remove the MBSU MLI. After we've got it there, Scott's going to stuff it back in the bag and allow Chill to bring it back inside. Here's Chill going to the APFR area, where he's going to drop off the lead lube tools and grab the APFR from that area and take it out to AMS. He's pretty much going to go the same route. He's going to go up to the forward truss and out to the seated cart area, up the AMS, and then deploy the APFR. Because of the translation holds on the, on the AMS, uh, we're taking the APFR out there for ag ag additional handholds and uh, translation ports. Once he gets there, we'll take some pictures and install a small wedge over one of the radiators, it's going to slide into an area, and I have a video shortly, slide into the area between the two radiators and secure there. And here is how we're sliding it over the main radiator, and then we're grappling with a wire tie to tie it down. Once we get it secured, then the MLI will pop out like a small tent, filling the wedge in between the two radiators to protect the radiators. Once we're there, Scott's shell's going to work back to put on the big blanket. You'll see it here. Uh, this is point A, the first tie down he does. And you saw the blanket kind of pop in. It's not going to happen that quick on orbit. We're going to have to go down to a second strap, put that strap around AMS, and then work to a third and a fourth strap. So this start third strap. It's very possible to get into the APFR and tie that strap around a strut right there by the wedge. And then he'll move aft and zenith to protect the uh, the final area of, of staging there. Once we do that, it does have a grounding pin on it that we'll apply. And once the grounding pin is installed, we're complete with both AMS small blanket and large blanket to protect their pumps. And here's an MBL video just showing the actual size of the blanket as it's deployed. Uh, he's working down what would have been the, the nader part of the previous photo. So after we get the two blankets installed and the MBSU MLI removed, uh, Chell and Scott will work together to bring both the APFR and the MBSU MLI back. Uh, Chell's going to grab the bag and go back completely the same way he came to the airlock, where he'll stow that bag outside the airlock and grab a cable bag. The cable bag is the one Mike spoke of with the PMA. IDA cables in it. Again, stowing most of the bags on the outside of the airlock so we don't have to ingress. Scott will come back with the APFR that we grab from the AMS area and install it at ESP2 uh, to perform the lead lubing. The arm will be presented there and move in close to Scott. We have some photos of that a little bit later. Uh, Chell will grab that cable bag and go 
Nader underneath the lab up to the porch side where we'll deploy the bag while he's doing that. We're giving him kind of good reference hand roll holds of where the cable is going to be tied to or deployed to. After he installs the, the cable bag, he's going to pull out the forward portion of the cable and temporarily stow it on a handrail. That's going to give us a good point where the center uh, line of the cable is. We'll secure it at the center point and then grab the aft portion of the cable out of the bag and route it zenith on the lab over to the node uh, where we'll connect the power cables up. So the orange cable is the first one we'll do. It is data for both IDA and PMA3, so we'll route it connected to the data port. And as we move back forward, as we move back forward, we'll push all the cable slack forward, make sure we have enough when we install the AD, IDA. Once he's back at the center point, he's going to move that directly forward on station over to node two and then up to the CBM area where we're going to deploy those two cables, uh, tucking it out of the way of any pedal deployments on the uh, CBM. Once he's complete with the orange cable or the data cable, we're going to go back and get the power cable, which we call the purple-white cable. He'll do the exact same thing where he stows the forward half of the cable out and then routes the aft portion of the cable back towards node one where we're going to plug it in again, nadir of node one. As he's done with that, he'll move back forward, pushing the cable forward, getting all the slack out, and back to the center point. At this point, Joe's going to break out of the cables and go uh, work on the MPV. And while we're doing that, Scott's already back at the Lee working on the uh, lubricating Lee B. Here's a good shot of Lee A that was previously lubricated. Uh, as we bring it in, you can see the centralizing ball screw right in the middle and the four latches. We're going to label those latches around clockwise just so we have a reference point. Uh, one, two, three, and four. And each side has an A and a B side just so we can talk to Scott while we're greasing up the equalization brackets and the rollers. There's two equalization brackets and four rollers on each latch. You can see them when they're extended. So that's uh, what we're going to grease. When it's retracted, We'll also grease the linear bearing tracks on each side of the latch. Here you can see a demonstration of the centralizing ball screw using the ball screw lubricating tool, or the BLT as we call it. Uh, we got grease on it, address it to the screw, and push it forward. And this makes sure that we have the grease in the grooves that we're looking at. Now this one's the easy ball screw, so we're going to attack it first because it's very visible. The other ones are blind mate. You can look here and see just an indication that there is grease that's moved by seeing the uh, ridges in the grease. Here's the blind mate connector on any one of the latches. They're all pretty much the same. We're going to go in uh, through a small cutout near the electrical connections, go back about 12 inches, as he inserts it, he's trying to miss any electronics or bolts that are in there. Uh, once we get it into the depth, which is the tape that's on the PLT, we're going to rotate the cradle in towards the ball screw. Once it's there, then we'll apply grease to the ball screw that's in the back of the latches. And of course, this is very easy to see on our trainer, but really hard to see in space. So after that, we're going to go after those linear bearing tracks, grease both sides of each linear bearing track to get gre grease. And as the latch moves forward, it'll pull the grease back through the whole linear bearing track. After that, we're going to go to the equalization brackets. Both inboard and outboard, there are four points for the equalization brackets and four rollers on each side, A side and B side. There's two each. So we'll attack those equalization brackets and rollers. And after that, we're complete, taking photos and getting out of here. And I think the next video you'll see is the arm moving in. And if you look closely on that, you can see the dots of grease that Terry applied on EV830. So on each latch, you can see grease dropped on each roller on the equalization bracket. Uh, the only thing you can't see here is a ball screw loop that we put on. All right, when Scott's done with that, we'll clean up the workstation. He's going to go uh, nadir over the lab to pick up on cables. Chell's going to pick up the MPV or non-propulsive vent, uh, go 
to Zenith on node three to the port side in cone where we're gonna install the MPV. You'll see it here, it's a really tight area. We have the PMM that was relocated, removed, and there's a plate on it. It's removed for this video. I'll show you in just a second how tight the tolerance is. But we're gonna move that first plate and then put the non-propulsive vent back on. Again, this is a very tight workspace. You can see here in the MBL video of how tight those two modules are actually gonna to be together. So we're using a lot of special tools to get that uh, tied down when we get it in and installed. And Chell's got the longest arm, so that's why we're sending him to the MPV. Moving Scott over the zenith of the lab over to the port side, he's gonna run the forward cable that Chell had temporarily stowed, run it the exact same way over the orange cable, and that's our power cable deployed back on the handrails getting ready for CBM, PMA move, and IDA install. Once we're done with that, we'll clean up the work sites and head back to the airlock. That's about a six and a half hour EVA and uh, coming inside and getting ready for RTVA in a week later.